start recording. Uh, this is our Design 350 lecture, and um, you can either see it on Google Meet or Discord. I think we've got everybody right now on Google Meet. Um, and I will put the recording of the lecture here when we're done. Probably won't be as fast as normal because I'm just back to back to back today. Uh, we're going to talk about cut and fill estimates from sections. And I made a video of it um, that, that's better than any lecture that <laughs> I could do. It actually came out pretty good. So if you want to look at the lecture, uh, the tutorial that is posted here, and I put it in the module for topo drawings, tutorials, and lectures, uh, tutorials and recordings. So this one really will tell you how you get cut and fill estimates from sections. I'm going to go over it today. And you can, you can see that I've got a little jam board to help that with. But let's talk about it a little bit. I'm going to hop over to here that gives me a better view than, than the other one. Um, yeah, so Natalia says, yeah, that was, that was a pretty good one. Um, I think it was one of my better demonstrations of it that I've done, so I'm glad I recorded it. And if everybody could please make sure that you've got your, um, so I can hear you now, Wasan. Your your mic is working, so that's cool. If you want to mute that, I don't know if you can hear us now. So I'm gonna let. Uh, oh, okay, so you're on your phone. Okay, good. So we can hear you now, and maybe you can hear us. If you, if you want to just go ahead and mute it because it comes in through the background. There's always a way, right? There's a phone. There's a tablet. There's a <laughs> this. So cool. All right. So uh, mute. Okay, so I can do it from here. There. So I don't know if you can unmute yourself now. So if you need to say something, put it in the chat. But there we go. Okay, cool. All right. So um, we're going to talk now about another thing that plan views are used for. Um, and that's to talk about what it looks like when it's existing, when it's graded, and when you see both. Because they have different line types for those, right? And these are very typical civil drawings that show those. Then I'm going to talk about section views a little bit and what to do with hatch areas. Then we'll talk about the calculations, all right? And how Revit gives you a very, very good close estimate and how AutoCAD, depending on how many sections you use, gives you, you know, kind of an estimate. All right, so let's take a look at this PDF drawing right here. Click. And I'm going to, uh, maybe I'll do a Jamboard on this one also. Um, take a snip. That looks good. And let me put that on a new Jamboard. How do I do a new Jamboard? Um, open a new Jamboard. I guess I have to come over here and open a new Jamboard. And it's, th there we go. And so here you see three different ones. Now, Let's talk about what you want to draw. You do want to draw all three of these views, but if you want to use every other one of the topo lines, you can, you can use every other one. And you just put it into AutoCAD as an image. I'll show you how to do that. You scale it, scale the image, and then you go ahead and and um, 
get it set up. And so it's a little bit hard. You have to go into the AutoCAD, kind of measure it, know how to scale it. I think I gave you a DXF of this or an AutoCAD basic uh, single level drawing of it too. Okay. Let's see what I gave you just real quick. You've got from profile one, you've got a DWF that you can make a, that you can make a, uh, a measurement from. All right. So you can open up the, the DWF drawing and take a measurement and then scale this properly. Which is why these usually have some sort of scale on it, but this one doesn't happen to. So let's take a look at it. This is the existing, and the existing, the way this one is being shown is cut and fill are still being shown on this, okay? So on this one, you can see all the existing, and they're usually like in dotted lines. Existing is a dotted line type thing dashed line dotted line hidden line you can use any of those for it and your existing topography is often shown that way now you can make these full topo lines if you want so long as when you get to the doing all then you show where um, the existing has been modified the existing has been modified Okay, so this is showing what's going on. See how, like, right here. That's the new construction, right? Straight lines mean that you have an even graded road that's either increasing or decreasing. So these little straight lines signify the road. And these little slopey lines signify where the road um, tapers down to meet the existing topography. And these dashed lines show where the, um, where the topography used to be. So that was your existing, and this, as an example, is your new. Okay, so that's how you read one, and that's really common. And so then you can pull out the existing, and you'll see there are areas in the existing that match because you didn't do anything where your existing and your new are the same. But you're still going to show this in this fashion. And this one shows just the graded. Okay, and you can... As you get better at these, you can see that is a road. It's sort of like uh, if you watched The Matrix and you saw the guy reading all the numbers and said, oh, well, there's a, the woman in the red dress and there's a this and there's a that from the numbers. This doesn't really look like a road, but if you recognize that anywhere where you see straight lines in a regular pattern is a level graded, not level, a flat graded surface, and these are increasing as I go, then, then you kind of get it, okay? So this is the new. And so somebody could read that and look at that and go, oh, I got it, that, there's a road. That's a road. And here you don't see anything like that. It's just ground going all over the place. Okay? Oh, there's a DXF file in there too. Renolfo says that there's a DXF file in there. Cool. That's even better to work with. Profile, there's an extract. XPS, uh, that must be in here somewhere. I'm not seeing it in my batch of stuff. I might have uploaded um, a DXF and not kept it on my computer. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So thank you, Renolfo, for finding that. So that's how you read these things. And, and you'll see these. And people want, planners want to see this because these all give a different set of information. Okay, this lets you know what's already there. And this gives you the idea of what's going to happen. 
And this gives you the idea of the differences. Okay, so I'm going to make a quick markup of that. This area has all been graded because I can see it from these lines. This whole area here is original. Everything is as it was. Excuse me. Okay, and then this area shows a road in the new, and this was all undisturbed. So that's how you read those. Okay, DWFX, yeah. And that's cool. You can still work with that. That's where you have to uh, get those. So, so that's what you see in the views. There's existing, graded, and all. And they all are used for different things um, to show different parts of the project. So now let's take a look at some typical section views and figure out what those are telling us. So these are again typical section views and um, I've got a zoom in of them to really look at one already. And what you see, well, maybe I want to maybe I want to take a new one of that and put it on the other jam board. So here you're going to see a typical section view that shows fill. And what am I seeing? I'm seeing this dotted line here was existing and best practice is to actually label it. You do want to label pointing at it if you can. Now I tend to put them up above. A lot of people would put it down here and do like a wipeout or something. And that would be a perfectly good way of showing it. So it doesn't have to be up here. I just happen to do that mostly because it seems easier for me. And then the new is typically shown. I think I have this one a little bit too light. I think I should have shown that maybe just a little bit darker. But that's my new level. And what you'll see is when I did my grading, here is my flat road right here. It's my flat road. But it can't just go right sharp into, you know, a, an edge. You have to give it some sort of a angle down. Now, this angle is part of local standards or if they're using a state standard, a Caltrans standard. So you can look those up in paving and grading standards to find out based on what type of ground this is and what kind of slope this is, you'll be required to put a certain angle on this and in Revit you can actually set that I just use our standard of what's already there as a default um, but you can go into it and you can find that stuff okay so that's the new road well that would be your geotechnical person would have a report for that like how do you know what this ground is whether it's hard or sandy or steep or whatever. So obviously, if this was steep, right, you would see that from your existing drawing, from your topo drawing, and you would know that slope. But um, this is something that you can actually set in Revit that says, depending on this grade, it will change this slope. It's really cool. And it's in there somewhere, but I don't I don't work with it much. Um, really and truly, most places at the level that we're dealing with, just say you know make 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 a taper on it. And if you're working for somebody, they're going to have those standards there for you, and they're going to give you ones to look at.
So you'll you'll just I I'm just letting you know that that information is out there, and then yeah, and then you hatch the area that is the new material. So in this case, it's a fill. I have to since my existing is too low, I have to dump dirt on the ground so that I can get this level grade up here. And dirt, gravel, sand, mix, soil, whatever it is. And of course, some of this is going to be asphalt or concrete too, right? So, um, but this kind of gives me a good idea. So I've got something like that. Usually, since this is a, a, a section view, I have to tell them which way I'm looking at the section. So I'll say which is where my east and my west are. So I'll do those. And then I place a grid on it. And there's lots of ways to place grids. Um, in this case, I draw it in. Um, I drew it in Revit by doing offsets. But you can make pre-formatted ones and things like that. And I give some indication of my scale up and down and some indication of my scale horizontally and that gives it to me now this is maybe a little too dark it's catching my eye a little too much and i can maybe adjust that some but it's not too bad so my earth is a little bit um uh, a little bit lighter than the rest of it so that's typically what I'm going to see now let me come to get one where I have to do a cut and you'll find out that it's almost the same thing I got that somewhere close to the same scale Okay, so you'll see much the same information. You see my existing, but now my existing is above my new. My new is right here, and it tapers. And you can see how the different slopes, it, it does it just a little bit differently there. That was all done automatically by Revit. Okay, so this says that this area in here, I have to cut because my new is below the surface. So I got to get my bulldozer in there and I have to make that cut. And everything else is the same, right? I've got this showing, I've got my earth fill, I've got this and I've got this. Now I didn't need to show this down to zero. I could have cut this section here and started at 50 and gone to 100. It just depends on what fits on your page nicely. Okay, and again, I, I identified which these are. Now, you'll see here, I didn't do quite as good a job, or maybe I just didn't. Yeah, I didn't do as nice a job. This is the only one that I put my boundaries on because I'm seeing it in the same direction every time. Now, there's one more thing to look at here. And you're probably wondering, what does that thing mean? What does, let's see, I'll put it up over here. What does this mean right here? Okay, well obviously that's the scale and that's what section number it is. But I have this four plus 25. Four plus 25. And, you know, this goes back to old, old, old stuff where, and, and they still do this, obviously, where they measure with chains, all right? So you have a chain and it's metal and you can stretch it out and you can pull on the chain really, really hard to take care of, make sure there's no slack and it's level. And so you know exactly how long it is from one end of the chain to the other. So you can just march down the highway chain after chain after chain. Um, 
and count the number of chains you use. So this says I used four chains plus 25 feet because most tapes are, even if they're metal, they're hard to get the slack out and they stretch. And so they're not considered good enough for a real heavy duty, really good survey. Are you going to need that? If you do large area land planning, if you're doing a public park or a public auditorium or a large commercial area, like in, um, in Davis, they're renovating. They, this is just perfect for what we're going to talk about next week. We get our first seminar next week on fair housing. They ripped up all of the... Um, trailer parks and kind of low-income housing on this kind of crummy old street in Davis and they took a strip about 200 feet wide and about a mile and a half long and they're putting up apartment complexes for students well again that's that's still a pretty good idea we have a lot of students that are uh, stressed and don't have places to do um, uh, places to live either uh, but you got a mile and a half that you have to survey down this street for this one development they use chains and they literally set out those chains now if you've got a strong enough laser or a good line of sight obviously you're going to do well with that but this is the number of chains and a chain is 100 feet long so this particular section is 425 feet away from my initial zero zero section which is right here okay so that's how you read one of these things right so you just want to draw this I guess now let me see if there's anything else that's really lab work um, so that's what I wanted to talk about. Here I'm doing mostly talking. And I have to let you know, if you'll notice, I had to reschedule the lab for noon. I have a meeting at 10 o'clock that I have to go to. It's part of my college service. and But I will, um, I will record it for you. And I'll actually show you how to uh, measure the DWF. Put your image in scale it and then just trace you guys can just trace and then I'll show you how to um, get your section off of that yes yes absolutely I'll be on at noon on the same thing uh, but I know some people you know that that conflicts it with what their schedule is and so I'll be able to do that and I think it was um, Kayla needs me very specifically to show how I did that section through areas. If somebody knows where that is, it's like you guys really need to start making a wiki page or something of all the lectures and where to find stuff. Because she asked me, okay, which lecture was that in? I, I, man, I'm looking around. I don't know which lecture it was in. Um, you, guys, <laughs> you guys can crowdsource looking at these things. Uh, where I did in AutoCAD... The section through lot nine of the Aries Estates. Which video that was? Um, she's looking for that video because she can't. But I told her I'd demo it again. So if anybody knows which one that is, you can post it onto the chat and then we'll send that on to, to Kayla. Um, Kayra. All right, so let's take a look now. What is the, what is the purpose of these sections? Well, yeah, it tells me where I'm going to cut and where I'm going to fill and things like that. But what, what, what good is it? I see a picture and it gives me an idea. But as always, there's land planning and calculations. And the, the trick is, how do I figure out how much dirt I either need to move or that I need to bring in with a truck? or I need to bring out with a truck. Trucks are expensive, 
and there's a lot of environmental issues with digging up stuff in one area and dumping it in a truck in another, it's always preferred to use a bulldozer to push the existing dirt around rather than pick it up from somewhere and move it somewhere else. Now, sometimes you have to, if you remember from compaction, it could be that the dirt just isn't good enough and you need to condition this dirt. You need to condition this area to a certain depth. So you might have on this something that says uh, a second layer right here that says that you have to condition it a certain way with a certain amount of sand, a certain amount of colloids, a certain amount of pea gravel of a certain size. So there's a lot of information that might be held in these section drawings that we're just not doing. Okay, this is not a geotechnical class. It's a land planning class, but you should realize that this is like the basic, basic, basic level. This is sort of like AutoCAD 1 where you drew stars. You go, well, why would I ever draw stars? Well, because you have to get good at it to do something really useful later on. So why do you have to draw these sections? So that you can get good at it so you can do something useful later on. All right? And one of those useful things is talking about compaction that's so critical on any job, even if it's even if it's a simple driveway where you have to do a certain compaction because you're going to put permeable pavers down and you have to do a certain compaction so that they don't sink into the ground when somebody drives their car over it. OK, which always kind of was weird to me, like you make it impermeable underneath the permeable pavers what is the use of the permeable pavers so you you lose some usefulness but those gaps still suck up some water uh it may, so so those gaps are still more permeable than just plain concrete and so you can think of them as little tiny cups all over the place that can each get five ounces of water um and then so it can take it can mitigate some a large rain event. But there, but it's not like, oh, the water's just going to go down underground. No, it won't. You do all sorts of stuff under those things um, to make it non-permeable. Anyway, I'm digressing. Um, so um, we want to know what kind of calculations you're going to do on these. All right, so one of the very first ones you're going to do is figure out if I was to bulldoze that whole thing and remove all of the all of the cut and truck in all of the fill, how many how much dirt would I be working with? And so the one way of doing it I've already got it up, but I clicked oops. Oh, that one doesn't work. This one up here works. This is supposed to be this other one up here. I don't know why that one didn't work. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird. Um, uh, I, I want, but it's working when I do this one. So there we go. So this is to calculate a volume. You take an area and then you press pull it along a length that gives you a volume right it's just like in SketchUp or AutoCAD or Inventor or anything if you want to make a 3d shape you start with a flat area and then you pull it along a distance and that gives you a volume okay and so if I'm gonna calculate the volume it's essentially the flat area that I see and then you pull it over a volume. And what kind of drawing, just for those of you who remember DT320, what kind of drawing is this when I have a flat front view and the rest goes off in an angle? What's that called? Oblique. 
Okay, that's an oblique drawing. And it's perfectly valid. It's a perfectly valid drawing. So it's this area times this distance is the volume. And of course, I'm making sort of a an estimate. I'm saying it's going to be exactly like this all the way until it hits the next one. Well, no, it's not. It's actually going to taper, right? It's got to get small somehow. So this is a gross estimate. To make a better estimate, I'd do another section here and another section here and another section here and another section. I'd have tons of sections, but that increases the amount of calculation I need to do. Okay? So if you're really good at calculating, you do a lot of sections. Or if you need a really good number, you do a lot of sections. But we're just going to do one section. Or uh, if you want to, to do more, you can do all five or six sections and determine what you've got. Okay, so you just grab this area. Now, if you drew this section in AutoCAD, you've done the area command. You type area and you go click, 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 close. And it tells you the area. And then you multiply that area by how far it is to the next section. 131 feet. And that would tell you how much volume of dirt or gravel or sand you need to dump into this area. And then you would do the same thing for the next one. You'd go, oh, well, the next one I have a new area to work with. And I'm going to calculate the area. And I'm going to multiply it by my distance. And you just keep doing that for each section. And you add up all the fill areas. And you add up all the cut areas. And then you usually do cut minus fill. Cut minus fill is the most common to do. Okay, so let's see how that works. Now, if I don't have it drawn in AutoCAD, I can estimate. And I just count squares because I, I know how to find the area of a rectangle. That's one of the ones I've memorized. Length times height. 50 times 10. And so I'm just going to estimate how many rectangles. And in the video I show, if I don't have a full rectangle, how do I look at other rectangles and go, well, that would fill up that one. And that would help fill up that one. And these two together would make one. So I really have three full rectangles. Each rectangle is 50 by 100. That's 500 plus 500 plus 500. 500 times 3. 1,500. It's 131 feet long. So that gives me 1,000 feet. 196,500 cubic feet. And that seems like a lot of dirt. And it is, so I want to calculate. But you know what? We usually, big civil jobs, don't go by cubic feet. Like, if you go to the rock yard, do they give you a cubic foot of soil? No, they give you a cubic yard. They get that scooper and they take a cubic yard, which is usually like half a scoop or three quarters of a scoop, and they don't even calculate very close, and they go up to your pickup truck and they go, Boom, and they dump a cubic yard in your pickup truck or in your trailer or in your dump truck. So we use cubic yards. Now, if you're on a certain type of a job, they might use cubic meters. But um, we're not using cubic meters. If you want to do that, you get a, another calculator out. 
So I want to know what this is in cubic yards. And I see a cubic yard is 3 feet times 3 feet times 3 feet. So a cubic yard is 27 cubic inch cubic feet. Okay, there's three of them this way. So that means there's nine across the top, and that's three deep. So to find cubic yards, I take my cubic feet divided by 27. You can just memorize that. Cubic feet divided by 27. That's still a big number, 7,277 cubic yards. That's 7,000 of my pickups. I got a little pickup truck. I got a medium-sized pickup truck. So if I want, I can get what's called a truck load. And most truck loads, that's that, you know, it's, a, it's, it's like what you see running down the road. It's a truck with a big old heaping thing of, of, of dirt or soil in it. And most trucks are rated between 15 and 22 cubic yards. And it's really by weight. Right, those trucks are a certain size, but if you fill it up with a very dense material, you know it's going to weigh a lot more. And so they're they're rated by weight, which is how many axles there are and how many tires there are and how well they can spread it across the the freeway so you don't make divots in the freeway while you're running down it. So you want the number of trucks. So on this one, I think I don't remember what I divided by. I think I divided by 22, but you'll see it in the video. All right, so I made a video of that. So that's a, a real common calculation. But now we want to get something called the net cut and fill. And this is uh, what I've just been showing you is what you would do in auto. Yeah, so you got a one ton pickup. And so Benjamin says one ton. So what is your... What, how many cubic, when you go and you get a scoop of soil or a scoop of gravel, are you getting a cubic yard or a half a yard for a one ton? Do you know what yours gives? Yeah, so, so a cubic yard, and you don't really care because it's not too much of a difference between soil and gravel, but, um, you know, those guys that are, those, the, yeah, um, you know, those guys that are taking those big trucks down the road, they're real careful about their weight because they, you know, get fined and get license suspensions and things like that if the CHP pulls them over on, um, on, um, on their weight calcs. Okay, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to look at this and I'm, I'm going to say, oh, let's see, here's my cool thing. I got slope and grade. I got area and perimeter. That's where I'm doing my square feet and acres and stuff like that. And here's my cut and fill. And so this would be each one of your sections would get one of these. It would either get a cut area or a fill area. Okay, do you see how that works? A cut area or a fill area. And there'd be a distance... To the next cut or the next section and a distance to the next section and the volume then of course is whatever that area was times the distance so if this was as an example let me make this bigger so you can see it if this was 1500 and I'm using feet so that square feet and it's going 131 more feet. What's my cut volume? Why didn't that do that? Oh, A5. To, oh, see, I got this wrong. Why did that do that? Oh, there it is. 196,500. So then if I want to know how many yards that is, 196,500, that's how many, 
that should be, why does that say times? That should be, golly, you can tell I did this late at night. And that should be divide also. I got those all backwards. Glad I'm doing this. Okay, and so 7, 2, I'll make it uh, 7,275 to make it an easy number. 485 truckloads at 15. So these are all wrong. Boy, I'm glad I caught that. There we go. So that's how you use this calculator. And you just use each one that you do. So let's say the next one was 500 for 125 feet. Then my total cut volume adds these up. And if later on I have a fill, let's say I've got 750 cubic feet of fill for another 140 feet. Okay. Then I can calculate my net cut and fill. And if I do my cut minus my fill, I would, I, I have my numbers to be able to do. Okay. So you can use this to do simple calculation. Now I suggest you do because you might have something like this on your skill demo because you'll want to do a little drawing maybe and, and, um, and then use it. All right, and so you'll obviously get some, some practice at it too as we go. All right, are there any questions on that, on how to use this cut and fill calculator? The cut area or your fill area is from your profile. Yes? Somebody have a question? Okay. All right. So, so there we go. So, that's how to do all these cut and fills and stuff like that. Now, I'm going to show you in Revit really quickly, and then we're going to do it in more depth in lab of how to get a very close estimate. So you can imagine that if I have tons of these and my distances were all like 50 feet apart, I'd get a better one. And if they were all 25 feet apart, I'd get an even better one. And if they were 10 feet apart, I'd get an even better one. And if they were five feet apart, it would be even better. And if they were one feet apart, it would be like, wow. Of course, I'd be doing a thousand different um, calculations if they were all one feet apart. Well, guess what's good at doing calculations? Revit. And it doesn't just do a calculation that way. It does it by taking the, uh, the whole volume of a topography and subtracting another whole volume. It doesn't worry about making little sections. It takes a volume. It knows the volume of your topography. And so if I've got an existing topography and then I do a whole bunch of road grading and I put one on top of the other and I subtract, what's left is my net cut and fill. So that's what Revit does. So let me show you that 
and the process that we're going to go by. So here's Revit. And you're going to go, oh my God, that's just so easy if you've got Revit and if you have everything. Now, I'm going to take some information that I extracted from a problem that's been in our Design 310 book for like 30 years. All right? So I'm going to go to my site plan and I'm going to make a new topography. Massing in site, a new topo surface, and instead of drawing it like we've done, right, we've made property lines and gone click, 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 click. I'm going to create it from an import. And before we've even done it from like a DXF that we brought in or an AutoCAD, I'm going to do it from something called a points file. Now you can get point files from drone scans and all sorts of things. But I actually exported a, temp, a, a point file from AutoCAD. You can do that, right? You can export the lines, the start points, the end points. You can export tons of stuff from AutoCAD. So I took an AutoCAD file that's been in my directory for years, and I exported the points, and it's just a bunch of XYZ points. XYZ, 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 XYZ. A bunch of points, and I'm going to open it. And I do have to know what I was using for my units. And that happens to be correct, decimal feet. And I get this cool thing. I go, wow, that's good. Something looks a little funny because of these big black areas. But I'm going to look at that in a sec. So now if I look at it in a 3D, that's a topo surface. That's how easy. Oh, I see that there's a bunch of weird points. They don't dive down to zero. There were some erroneous blank cells. So I'm going to edit that surface and just get rid of the stuff that's obviously dopey. There, I have a topo surface. Is that just the coolest thing ever? I've got a topo surface. And I can even readjust it. Here's where I'm saying that you can, you know, do different intervals and this, that, and the other thing. And maybe I'll make this every five feet. And that's where I'm saying you can ignore a lot of them and make it not so complex for yourself. So I've got a topo surface. But now I want to make some sort of a road down the middle of it. And to do that, I know I have to bulldoze something. I have to do some grading. So I don't know why they call it a graded region. It's a graded surface. It's a topography. So I'm going to make a new graded topography. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my existing one. Oh, hold on. I got to do, I got to, it gave me a warning. I forgot to do something. My original one if you'll notice, says I made it in new construction. I don't want, that's my existing. I have to be careful about that. I have to get my phase right. And see how it kind of makes it sort of half tone and everything? That's good. I want that. And another thing I need to do is pin it so I don't accidentally move it later on. So now, click make a graded region, a new construction graded region from that. And look, over here it tells me what's my cut and fill. So now I'm going to do something really weird. I'm going to make it level right now. So I'm going to erase all of those. And I'm going to put some points in at, um, whoops, So 
Remember how I cut my existing there. Come on. Okay, let me just show new. There we go. That's my new one. Edit that so I, I got rid of all those. Now I'm going to place some points at, say, I don't know. I wonder what my elevation is here. That one's at 100, and that one's at 40. So let me let me place some points at, I don't know, halfway in between, 75. And I'm just going to cut a road. And I'm not cutting a very straight road because I didn't make myself any markers. Cool. And it tells me my net cut and fill, it's a lot. Okay, and so now I can get my net cut and fill from it. But you can see now when I go to my 3D view, what I've got. And if I do my show new, that's what my new looks like. And I, I, I have to trim off some points here and some points there. A little bit of work to do, but you can see that I've got a level roadway across there. And if I really want to get that set, I'll put some 75s like right down the middle of it. And it looks like I've got to get some 75s like right out on the edge there. And another 75 right out on the edge right there. So you can just get a whole bunch of points along there to even this thing out. So that you have something that looks like a roadway. See how now I've got this nice level road. Right through it. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you on how to get net cut and fill from those. All right? So you can get you can get those things as you go. All right, so now, and I'll do a, uh, I'll do a more in-depth demo of that later uh, during the lab. So let's see if I covered everything. Subtract new, yes. So that's, that's how you do it using Revit. And it's pretty quick. Of course, I already had the, the points. I already had all the points. And the trick is to know what existing, what your graded region is, and how to set your phases. Okay. Um, or you can make just one section. I'm not sure what that one is referring to. Um, for, for finding the cut and fill, I'm not sure about the one section. Uh, you still need all the section views to, um, and, and you. So there's other reasons, by the way, for section views. Part of it is about drainage, so that you can see where you need drainage on these. Um, about where you need to put your road surface and all sorts of other cool stuff. All right. So,
So, yes, the section. So, Laura says the section views are seeing the road like you want to see it. Yes. So, at this section of the roadway, what does it look like? And how is it compared to the existing? It also tells you drainage coming onto the road and off of the road. Like if you were making this road, would you want tons and tons of water just coming right down there? And it's hitting sideways across the cars on the road. This might have a huge acreage of water just pouring down here. No, you're probably going to have some sort of a drainage system over here so that it comes into a culvert and comes under the road. So that like every two or 300 feet, you've got some sort of a culvert that's going to come and then come up over here for further drainage. So there's tons of reasons for having these sections. But basically what it shows is how the road compares to the existing dirt. So you have to find out how much you have to take away or add. And what does your drainage look like? And what kind of slope are you going to have next to the road? You can imagine if that was perfectly straight and that was perfectly straight, you'd feel really walled in if you were driving on that road. And if this came down perfectly straight, you need some sort of a guardrail here so that if somebody made just a minor little mistake, they didn't just go boop and flip over and go down the, the thing. Okay. In essence, this says, what does that look like when I look right across this cut right here? If I cut the road right there, what the, the land right there, what does it look like? And the points are the markers on the side. These points right here, are these the ones you're talking about? These? Uh, this? Yeah, these po that's your elevation. That That's just an elevation marker. So it says that elevation is... 50 feet. That elevation is zero feet. Some places don't use elevation markers. They just stick that right there. But I tend to use a marker or, or a dot or something to make it really clear which one the thing is lining up with. Okay, so, and you can see it's nice to know, oh, uh, this one's at 50 feet. When I look at this one, it's at 80 feet. So my roadway is increasing in elevation as I move along. So I'm, when I read these things, I've got lots of information coming at me from different... Uh, I know, I got my next one coming up. Uh, I have lots of information coming at me. I have where it is. From this view, I have what phase it is from the different views. I have what elevation it is from this view. I have how much cut and fill I've got. There's just like, oh my gosh. So you have to just start piecing these puzzles together to get all these. Cool? And we'll go over it more. I'm basically going to redo this lecture on Thursday, I think. So that you really, really get it. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording now.